The Toyota GR Corolla, one of the most exciting, most complicated, and most bizarre hot hatches to come from one of the world's most aggressively normal car companies. How does the all-wheel drive system work? What about that crazy engine? Let's dive in and let's find out. All right, straight into it. The underside of the GR Corolla. This is where the magic happens. You have your gearbox and your transfer case. The transfer case is the heart of GR4. This is where the variable torque split happens, the 60, 40, 50, 50, 30, 70. And it's because this little unit overdrives the rear axle by 0.7%. Why does that matter? Let's go to the back. Let's look at the rear diff and I'll explain why. This is the 12 plate clutch pack at the front of the rear differential that makes everything possible. It takes up the rotational difference I talked about up on the transfer case. You get a three variable torque splits you can choose in the cabin. And it's not what you think. It isn't actually the engine or anything in the front sending more power to the back. It's this locking the whole system together. I talked about that uh, gearing advantage the rear has. So the rear spins slightly faster, 0.7% faster to be exact. What happens is when you close up this clutch pack, when it's in 3070 mode, of course, the rear will actually break the front axle. It'll subtract torque from the front to send power to the rear. It's also what makes this thing really peculiar because it's never locked together. The all-wheel drive system isn't just moving as one unit. There's always a little bit of slip. Critically though, if this unit fails or if the car decides that you're being an idiot, uh, it'll open it up fully and send no power to the rear, making this not a GR Corolla, making it just a Corolla. Beyond that, it's a three-cylinder turbo engine that's powering this little ball of wonderfulness. And it's not exactly the same as the GR Yaris that it comes out of. There's actually a few changes. So exhaust cam, exhaust valves, exhaust springs, turbo, all these things were changed just for the GR Corolla. And there's a lot of tech packed on this motor. There's also direct and port injection, variable valve timing, all the normal stuff. And the construction of the engine is built to make a lot of power. It has really thick, huge cylinder walls on an open deck block. Behind it, six-speed manual gearbox going to the GR4 system we talked about earlier, and it's sort of just the key feature of the car. It's what gives it its personality. It's that three-cylinder roughness. It's, it's just so unique and strange in a world of two-liter turbo four-cylinders. It's kind of the reason why I'd buy the Corolla. Here is the GR Corolla's front suspension. It's quite a bit more conventional than the rest of the car up here, because the rest of the car, of course, all-wheel drive, three-cylinder turbo, completely weird. Where up here, it's just a cast iron steel strut suspension with passive dampers from KYB. I think the only real notable feature to look at is these huge brakes, 14 inch rotor, big old four piston caliper by uh, Akabono, and they're really quite good. They're actually a little bit bigger than the Supra's brakes, which is kind of neat because it's a smaller, lighter car. One more interesting thing to note is you see all this like toothpaste slather on here. That is the nine feet more of structural adhesive that the GR Corolla gets along with 349 more welds compared to the normal Corolla. Helps rigidity, helps handling. It's just classic engineering here. Just good damping, good stiff damping to be fair, and a big old sway bar. All right, the GR Corolla's rear suspension. Couple notable things. This wheel spacer, really unusual for a factory car. Usually they just take it up on the hub, but there's a good reason for that. Uh, one of them is to fill out this wide body. Two, it's because the GR Corolla uses a mostly normal Corolla rear suspension arrangement. So you have a, this is called a semi-trailing rear suspension. You have a trailing arm, upper control arm, and a pair of lower control arms. The critical difference between this and a normal Corolla is in the lower control arms, you have a couple of ball joints on the outer side to offer more precise suspension control. Beyond that, I mean, the magic's just in the dampers and the springs being tuned just for this car. You fit in the drive shaft in there and you have a GR Corolla. All right, so. That was a deep dive of the GR Corolla, this very blue GR Corolla. And I think, uh, I think I like this car. It's constructed in an interesting way. It has a really wacky all wheel drive system, just a bizarre thing. Um, but it's a strange product from a company that normally makes very normal things. It's not just in the all wheel drive system. It's in the offbeat charm of its three cylinder engine, the chunky action of its shifter, and this pervasive shit boxy charm that just makes you fall in love with the GR Corolla. It uses out-of-the-box engineering solutions to make a truly charismatic little cheek pinch of a hot hatchback. 